Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I am here to talk a little bit about something called Marcon's. And Marcon's is kind of a controversial diagnosis because it's not really recognized by the mainstream. However, it is associated with chronic illnesses like chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and chronic Lyme and all these other sorts of things. And since I recently found out that I have Marcon's, <laughs> then it, of course, is even more interesting to me. I don't know about you, but I just wanted to share. It's also an update about uh, what's going on with me because I have been posting some videos once in a while, not to make it all about me because it's not all about me, but uh, as a, someone who works with other people in a holistic practitioner setting, uh, it I hope it's helpful that I can at least understand what people are going through and the frustrations that they're going through because dealing with these types of things can be exceptionally frustrating, as you know. So uh, let's see, right now it is January, it's the end of January, 2022. And in September of 2021, about the end of September, I got the worst vertigo ever. I thought I was like having a stroke or something. I I mean, the room was flipping up this way and that way, and I couldn't put my clothes on. I, I woke up in the morning and it was, it, I was fine the day before. And then all of a sudden it was really bad. And so I had to go to the ER and it sucked big time. And it, they, I went, I had the crystals thing done. Everybody's like, did you get your crystals done? Yes. I've had my crystals manipulated multiple times. And I went in like twice and the second time it didn't even seem to, it, it seemed to like make it even a little bit worse. So I took a little break from the crystal manipulation <laughs> to explore other things. And one of the things that I did was talk to my integrative doctor uh, because having an integrative doctor or functional medicine doctor is, is very important if you have these weird things going on because most of the mainstream doctors, they really, they really don't know. Um, well, they know some, they can help. It depends on the doctor. I don't wanna make them all out to be like whatever, but. So I had already gotten a diagnosis more recently from a rheumatologist that I had fibromyalgia because they couldn't really figure out the other weird stuff I'd been having with my nervous system. So they kind of put it into the fibromyalgia diagnosis. And I hadn't, he wanted me to be on some SNRI, which is like an antidepressant drug for that. And I'm like, I don't really think this is the issue. I think that there's some sort of chronic infection that I have that they haven't figured out what it is. It is causing most of my problems. That was what I thought for like a long time, but they couldn't find anything. They do all these tests and everything looks normal. And, and so they just fibromyalgia anyway. So I get the vertigo and this is sucking big time because I can't walk straight. And I feel like crap. And I mean, it's just, it's just awful. I still have a little bit of it. That's the crazy thing. Now I actually just did a video today that I, it's kind of embarrassing, but I put it up anyway, where I'm dancing, I'm doing rave dancing with my, my hands, you know? <laughs> you know, because part of this is like a big F you, F you to my vertigo video. Like, I don't want this to, I, I like, I really enjoy dancing and I don't ever want to never be able to dance again but like the, for the first like month or two I could I could I, I mean I had to like keep my head like this so I wouldn't trigger it it was awful I could barely do anything uh so it's better now but I still feel like I'm a little bit on a boat uh I sometimes I actually feel actually I've got to be careful I'm moving the camera you'll think you're on a boat <laughs> um but yeah I feel a little better but it's still not it's still not right so anyway I go to an ear nose and throat doctor the first ear, nose, and throat doctor just says I have allergies. I'm like, I, I've tested negative for allergies. I don't have allergies, according to the allergist here at your facility. So that, that didn't matter to her. Take some Flonase is what she wanted me to do. So I went and got a second opinion from another ENT who's ultimately still saying take Flonase, but she at least did a bit more testing and also thought I might be having what's called a vestibular migraine, which is a migraine that can manifest with vertigo, which is really crazy weird. But considering I've had like ocular migraines, I, I don't have like massive headaches, but a migraines run in my family. So that made a little bit more sense. And then she also checked my ear with a microscope and found out that I had an inflamed eustachian tube, which totally made sense because I could feel that there was something wrong with this ear. It's always been this ear. So, but that wasn't enough. I went to the integrative doctor and I said, you know what? I'm always like, I always have this chronic stuffy nose. Nothing ever seems to solve it. I've done this, I've done that. I supposedly don't have allergies, blah, 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 blah. And I just don't understand why somebody just doesn't swab my nose to see what's in my freaking nose. And I still don't understand why, to, why they don't do this with mainstream doctors, because they don't. So he goes, well, you know what? We can get a test 
from a special lab. It's called Microbiology DX. And that will um, see if you have, you know, what's going on with your nasal cavities. And uh, it's pretty easy. And I had to pay for it out of pocket. So it was like 280 bucks or something like that. But at this point, I was so frustrated. So I was like, okay, I get the swab. I don't even think I got a good sample. Because I'd seen some videos where they were putting the samples way back, like they did with the PCR test. And this one, they said to put it up here. And I, I put it up there and I was like, I don't really think I'm, I'm not getting the usual gunk that I see on my tissue. And I'm not sure if this is really going to show anything because it wasn't like the worst that I've had. You know, when you've got sinus stuff, you get crappy stuff coming out of your nose. But I was like, all right, I hope this is enough. And I sent it in. And then a couple of weeks later, I got the positive result. And the result was Marcon's. <laughs> And Marcon's is, some people don't call it a full-blown infection because you can have it without a full nasty sinus infection, but it's like a colonization of antibiotic resistant staph in your nasal passages. And what they found is that people who have the, Marcon's actually stands for multiple antibiotic resistant coag negative staph, something like that. Uh, so Marcon's, is not something that you can get, you, it's not something that's usually found with people who are healthy. It's usually found in people who have chronic fatigue type issues or weird chronic illnesses or fibromyalgia, they'll often have the Marcons. And so it's a sign that your immune system isn't fully functioning or maybe it's extra taxed because of the Marcons. And so it's something that potentially could help if you know that it's there, to try to clear that stuff out because it's certainly not helping. And what happens with the Marcons is that you get what's called a biofilm, which is like the, the bacteria create this kind of like, well, it's like a film. They create this stump substance that is like their little home in your nasal passages and it becomes impervious to attempts to get rid of the bacteria. So it's actually, that's also what makes it resistant to the antibiotics is the biofilm ends up blocking the antibiotics. So I had actually, after I'd gotten that vertigo, I'd actually taken some antibiotics um, because I just felt like there was infection going on. And actually the antibiotics did help a little bit, but they didn't completely clear it out because there's Marcon's and the test also showed that I had a very strong biofilm, like a three plus. <laughs> so that's like a strongest biofilm. And, and so this would be indicative of why I've had chronic sinus going stuff going on for years, even though I now test negative for allergies. They also found out that I had Aspergillus niger or niger, niger, probably Aspergillus niger uh, in my nasal passages, which is a mold. And I suppose it's possible, I, I, it's just an environmental thing, but I, my concern is that I had been in a water damage department when all of this happened and I had tested positive for mycotoxins, AKA mold toxins. So there's this possibility that that is indicative of maybe some fungal infection going on. And that maybe is why my eustachian tube, <laughs> maybe on both sides has been getting blocked and I've been having other um, inflammatory things happening. And then my nervous system has been impacted because apparently these things can release toxins into your system and then you feel like crap. So uh, how do you treat this? Well, you can start treating it with over-the-counter remedies and those would include xylitol nasal sprays because xylitol breaks the biofilm up and they've done studies and it, it actually does work on the biofilm and those you can get over the counter. I also started using colloidal silver because that's also potentially an antimicrobial, antifungal. Um, but I uh, you know, had talked to my integrative doctor and we said, well, let's see how I'm doing. And then maybe we'll use a more potent spray. So I was on that for like a um, couple months and it, it was helping. And then I did try the Flonase. A lot of people say Flonase is really bad. I'm, it's a steroid. I'm not that crazy about doing it, but I have to tell you, the vertigo was so freaking awful. I was like, I got to, I got to at least calm it down a bit. So I've been taking that, but I use the other two sprays throughout the day to try to bust up the stuff that's really causing the inflammation. And then in further conversation with my integrative doctor, which I had yesterday or the day before yesterday, something like that we will be doing a uh, custom made nasal spray that has xylitol in it to, to break up the biofilm 
an antibiotic and an antifungal. And as much as I'm not crazy about doing those, um, I have been fighting this thing for years now and it's pissing me off and I'm sick of it. And as much as I uh, believe that herbs and things can help, sometimes if you have something that is really chronic like this and it's really hard to get rid of, sometimes you need to try the more difficult or, you know, the Western medicine drug. So when I, when I, when I work with people and holistically to me, holistic is like, let's come up with the best way to approach it. And sometimes that might mean going to some Western medicines, but I usually try to keep those more as like a, a last resort, at least for myself. Like this is like my last resort. My first result is to try to do it without that. But if I can't, I, you know, and here's the other thing, you also have to balance it out. It's like, what is the cost of my body being flooded with these toxins continually? And I, maybe I could do colloidal silver for six months or a year and it might get rid of it. But if the antibiotic gets rid of it more quickly um, and the rest of my body isn't so stressed out, that might be better. Yes, there is the concern that taking more antibiotics will create more antibiotic resistant bacteria, but I think it's, there's a specific kind of antibiotic that he's using that hopefully won't have that issue. So uh, if you might have Marcons, uh, I'm sharing this because maybe this will help you with possible ways to deal with it. One would be doing more holistic remedies such as the um, xylitol sprays. And some of those have some antimicrobial things in there. You could potentially do some herbal type remedies uh, in Ayurveda, they have nausea, which is an oil that you put in the nose. It also has some herbs in it. Now I had done a little bit of nausea a couple of years ago and I thought it didn't really help me that much, maybe because I have the Marcons. The thing I wanna say about the Ayurvedic remedies is that um, we are living in a modern world now. And back in the day, they didn't have issues with antibiotic resistant bacteria because we didn't have antibiotics. So, we kind of have to consider that when we're looking at using an Ayurvedic remedy that was developed prior to some of our modern problems. Does that mean the Ayurvedic remedy can't help or that it won't work? No, but it might mean that we need bigger guns. And so for me, it's like, I, I right now don't think that putting oil and herbs in my nose is really going to help this much. I think it needs a more modern approach but I am using some Ayurvedic herbs otherwise to help support my body and to help my nervous system because ultimately what whatever this is, if it's just this, hopefully it's just this and we can clear it out and I'll be feeling better. But my worry is that it's elsewhere or that there's also a virus that's part of this, but whatever's going on is impacting my nervous system. So my legs are like tingly a lot and it's not comfortable. My head feels a little... You can't tell, it's like I said, I just did this video where I was dancing. You wouldn't know how crappy I feel most of the time, but trust me, I feel crappy most of the time. I'm just feeling grateful that I'm even able to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I use the Ayurvedic herbs to try to heal some of the damage and to try to mitigate the damage and also to help uh, calm my nervous system down and also to help, help me with my overall health. And considering that all of the rest of my labs look pretty good, <laughs> Uh, it kind of looks that I'm mostly healthy, except for whatever this stupid crap is that's like causing me to have these symptoms. But on paper, I'm like, except, you know, for a, for a mainstream doctor, they, I walk in, they look at me, they look at my labs, and they check everything out, and they just think like, why are you here? <laughs> they, I, I think on some level, they're thinking like, how could you possibly like feel so bad? Because like, when they look at me, like I'm going to be 52 in about a month, two months, not even quite. So I'm, I'm going to be like 52. And they look at me and they're like, you know, like they're seeing people who are like much worse shape than I am in, but um, yeah, still have crap going on. So <sighs> I hope this was helpful. I'm just kind of rambling. And, but I felt like, okay, I should probably should do some sort of video update and talk about this. Uh, if you want to get this lab test done, I'm not sure if you need to have a doctor sign off of it. Uh, it may depend on the state that you're in, but the lab is called Microbiology DX. It's Microbiology DX. And if you do a search for it, you should find it and uh, you'll see the website and then you can go and order the, uh, the lab and then they'll send you the swabs. You don't have to go in anywhere. You can do it all from home. 
send it back in and they'll send you the results back in a couple of weeks. And they're very nice people. So that's how you find out if you have Marcons. Alrighty, if you have any suggestions, you can always put them in the comments and uh, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.